Hi there, I'm playing with Chunk again. This time I have a very interesting power supply. Here you can see the, the product label with some technical data. And I think the most interesting number here is output power 2450 watts at 12 volts and about 200 amps. Now, you may think that's a huge power supply filling half a room or something. No, that is not so. This is it. As you can see, compared with my hand, it's a little bit more than a handful. Um, on this picture here, you can see how it looks in a, when it is installed in the system. It comes from a HP C7000 blade enclosure. Um, it is, of course, a little bit bigger. It has fans, it has a AC uh, filtering stage, which is not uh, which is not here at the moment, because that's not so interesting. It's just a bunch full of jokes and capacitors and, as I said, the, also the, the fans. You all know how a fan looks like. It doesn't make much, much sense to show you a computer fan. And I think the most interesting thing here here is input. Oh yes, uh, the power factor correction and uh, input rectifier is also missing. It's, a, it's on a second board. This here is the input 400 volt DC. Uh, here is a control board that is missing. I have uh, unsoldered it. But I think the most interesting part are these two transformers. These two transformers uh, are responsible for the entire uh, current that this power supply can deliver. So that means each of this one, uh, of these two small transformers, delivers 1,200 watts, which I think is pretty amazing. Now, let's see if we can get that a little bit closer. Yes. And uh, as you can see, it's not really a transformer as you used to see. Um, they have chips and circuitry directly on the transformer coils if you can call that like this. So I cracked this one open, so the core comes off. Looks like that. Um, and as you see, we have one, oops, one turn here with a big MOSFET transistor here. And if we turn that over, I have already broken it completely. We have the same circuit on this side, plus some additional capacitors here. Now, what are they doing here? So I took a little bit of time and made this sketch here, just for the circuit of the transformer. Oops, just the camera. Thank you. Um, we have, compare with this, the red part here is our transformer core, which consists of a ferrite material, high frequency stuff. We have one turn going in that direction and the other turn going in this direction. So as you can see it here, 
one turn goes that way around to the transistor and then to the minus to the negative pin which was soldered here the positive pin was here so to compare that negative pin this big heavy copper rail here and the positive here and you can see on the underside this is a massive negative backplane for the minus pole and here is the positive pin that goes to this heatsink here this is a heatsink and also the positive rail it is entirely made of copper very large then this heatsink makes a turn here and comes along this way this is all positive rail here and then we have here 10 switching MOSFETs for the output 12 volt this uh, heatsink here is also connected to the output 12 volt here and the two heat sinks left and right of the transistors are of course to cool the transistors down now funny thing is the uh, if the, the the current in this inductor ring here in this single turn coil if we can call it like that if it goes that way so yes, let's say this is a, a positive wave well it doesn't matter which one is positive or negative or north pole or south pole if it goes that way that uh, MOSFET gets switched on through these external uh, switching pins the black squares here are these two small uh, little transistors there is uh, some circuitry a couple of resistors around I haven't drawn them all, them all so if the current goes that way the logic switches on that MOSFET and the current goes to the negative side if the uh, the polarity changes the current goes that way the circuit switches on this transistor and the current goes also to the negative side or it depends how you look at it you can also say this switches and it goes to the positive side it doesn't matter now we have we also have this bunch of capacitors here maybe you can well i have to zoom it in oops wrong way you see these capaci capacitors here they are just connected between the positive and the negative uh, connection of that board like this so that means we have the transformer we have rectifier we have uh, filter caps everything on the board and inside the transformer itself now if you look at uh, the power supply we see there is only a couple of small capacitors here there are two capacitors underneath the power uh, the heatsink here so in fact we don't need a lot of filter capacitors around this because we already have the capacitors here and since we are using a very high frequency we don't need big capacitors anyway now the frequency I don't know how high it is I would guess we are from a couple of hundred kilo uh, 
yes a couple of hundred kilohertz maybe close to a megahertz or something i don't think we are much higher than that but if you know it better you can leave it in the comments you can tell me if you have more technical details on this power supply so i thought this is a quite interesting design now the question is why do they do that so the other way of doing this would be you have a coil you have some kind of diode you have a filter cap you have your output now however you do is you do it in the detail in, in in the basic circuit it always looks like this now if you take the best diode you can get it's a, a short key diode for example you would probably have a voltage drop here of maybe 0 0.4 volts uh, there may be short key diodes with a better forward voltage but keep in mind we have 200 amps so even if you distribute the 200 amps on 10 diodes you still have 20 amps per diode that well that doesn't matter for the no i have to say it in a different way so why are they do this because 200 amps at 0 0.4 volt gives you a power loss of 80 watts so you lose 80 watts just because of this type of rectifier uh, that means a lot of heat that means a lot of power uh, loss uh, 80 watts is 3.3 percent of the entire output power so if you're aiming to have a, a, a very quali good quality power supply with a good efficiency you don't want to lose 3.3 percent just in the output rectifier there are a lot of other points where you lose uh, power so you don't want to have that so here for this transistor we got an um, bsc 16 n 4 ls this is an Infineon Optimus 3 and channel MOSFET and it is rated 40 volt 100 amps and the most interesting uh, number from the data sheet sheet 1.6 milliohm Now that's a very interesting number, 1.6 milliohm is very very low. Um, we have 16 of them. We have 8 on each uh, transformer. 4 for the positive wave, 4 for the negative wave. Um, that means we have 12.5 amps per transistor at 1.6 milliohm. That makes, after calculating all that stuff, 3.7 five watts in total for all 16 transistors together 
So one transistor is uh, 0.23 watts. That's for one transistor. So you see the difference that corresponds to 0.15% of the output power. And the output power is, as we saw on the data sheet, 2450 watts. So that's the way how to save energy. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a simple design. No, there is a lot of energy engineering around here. It is also interesting if you look at this. There are four primary coils. They're all, they are all hooked in parallel. You can see it here. If you remove that heat shrink tube, we have four black wires, four white wires. So this is in fact one uh, primary coil, but it's divided into four independent coils. They look like that. Uh, this, I think, is to reduce the, the inductivity. So four coils in parallel have less inductivity than one big coil, so you can go higher with, the, with your frequency. You also have four secondary coils. One is out here. Two is bent up and the, and the other two are here. Each one with two transistors, as I explained. Well, I think that's a short video with an interesting power supply. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Thank you.